Hi, everybody. Uh, in this video, uh, I am going to uh, help you get started with the uh, Plinko analysis assignment. So at this point, um, hopefully you've watched the uh, two videos on Plinko. Um, many of you guys have probably seen the game before watching The Price is Right. Uh, but if you have not, hopefully that familiarized yourself with the game. Um, so what we have here is a replica Plinko board. Um, this is the, the same the same setup, the same uh, dollar values at the bottom, the same seven slots you could drop from at the top. And uh, in this example, I'm going to help you guys analyze dropping a Plinko chip from slot from slot A. Um, so a couple things to notice. If you drop from slot A and the Plinko chip can only bounce left and right, then if you put a one at, uh, at slot A and you apply Pascal's method, then all the way down, right, 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 you can just fill in once, all the way down. One, 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 one. And what you can actually see is that it is physically impossible for a Plinko chip to get anywhere in this part of the board. So I'm just like Xing it all out, shading all in. And it's actually impossible for a uh, Plinko chip dropped in slot A. It cannot reach the rightmost slot at the bottom. It's impossible. So for each one of these, as you do them, like if you're dropping from slot B, then I would I would suggest just Xing out where the Plinko chip can't be. It'll just make your job easier. Um, so that's just a helpful tip to get started. But I'm going to help you with A. So we're going to apply Pascal's method. We should be well practiced up with that. Um, so the first couple rows are fairly easy, just looking like Pascal's triangle. Same with the next one, one plus two, two plus one. But you need to be careful along the edge of the Plinko board because there's only one way to get to this spot from the three. So you carry down the three, three, six, four. Um, and then the next row, nine, 10, five and then carry the nine. So again, just be careful at the edges that sometimes you're just copying down a number. 19, 15, six, 28. I'll be, I gotta be careful. I'm doing this with mental math. I did definitely advise you use a calculator. Don't rush through things. Carry down the 28. Um, that is 62, 55, 28, eight and then an even 90 uh, 117 uh, 83 36 if you want to pause the video and just finish it off you can a little boring watch me add numbers together or just applying Pascal's method until we get to the bottom just a plinko board is pretty big so the numbers you get uh, by the end are they're getting pretty big too 207. It's 210, uh, that's 119, 45, 10, and 1, 297, 417. Oh boy, I think I'm going to whip, whip out the calculator, getting a little dicey for me with these big numbers. 329, 119 plus 45. 164, 55, 11. And then we have one more uh, decision for each of these Plinko chips to make before they land in their bins. So we can see there's 297 ways to get to that $100 bin. Plus 417, 714 ways to get to this bin. And we'll just finish off our Pascal's method, working our way across. 329 plus 164, 493, 164 plus 55, 219, and then 66, 12, and then one as we did earlier. Um, we have uh, fully analyzed the number of ways to get to each bin. Now, if you wanted to analyze your chances of dropping from slot A, and getting into any of these slots, specifically the 10,000 one, I mean, we all want to win the $10,000. We need to add up the total number of ways there are to reach the bottom. So just do a little total, 297 plus 714, 
746. Seven fourteen plus seven forty six, and I think the hardest part of this assignment for you guys is be being careful to do your additions right. So you got two thousand five hundred forty eight ways that a plinko chip can zigzag its way to the bottom. Of those ways, two hundred and nineteen reach the ten thousand dollar slot. So what you guys will be doing is analyzing the same thing for slots B, C, and D. How many ways can you reach the bottom? How many ways can you reach the, the $10,000 slot? Because then in theory, you could calculate the probability of getting $10,000 given that you dropped from slot A. You have, without spoiling too much, you have the information right here to do that 219 out of 2,548. So you guys will be doing slot B, you guys will be doing uh, slot D. So let me just give you that hint just to make sure that everybody's off to a good start. If you're dropping from slot C, you cannot get anywhere here on this part of the board or anywhere here on this part of the board, maybe shaded in. That way you're not tempted to add anything in there. And then slot D, starting here, then from the slot C diagonal all the way across, you can't get there. And then we can't get anywhere here as well. And uh, note that for B, C, and D, you might get on the edges on both sides. Just be careful applying Pascal's method on the edges. Um, have a care there. Okay, and then moving on, what I'm asking you guys to do is, uh, now that you've found the number of ways to reach the bottom and to get the $10,000 for each of these starting positions, you can determine the probability of winning $10,000 from each of these four beginning positions. So you have the, you have for slot A, B, C, and D, you have what you need. Remember the probability of an event happening, the theoretical probability is the number of ways it can happen divided by the number of elements in the sample space. And it's different for slot A, B, C, and D, but you have all you need um, using uh, the things you've calculated. So I'll leave that with you. Um, after you do number one, you should be able to sit, explain number two and which, uh, which, which slot would you drop your chip in to maximize your chance of winning 10,000 should be clear after you do question one, uh, for question three, you will note that we only did four slots on the Plinko board. So why didn't we do add a slot E, F, and G? Why did we not need to? So think about that and just a little explanation why we didn't have to do those three calculations. That's number three. And then finally on the back, what I have you guys doing is doing a little analysis and actually calculating what the expected winnings could be uh, per, um, if you play Plinko, per Plinko chip. So um, I have the five different money totals in the left-hand finishing slot um, for, uh, I want to be clear too, you guys are only analyzing slot D for this one. So you guys will be, after you do slot, uh, slot D, it's these numbers that you guys will be using in the table. So how many ways are there to get $0? Don't forget to count the, there's two bins where you get zero. So don't forget to add those up, count them twice. Two bins for 1,000 and 500, 100, but there's just the one bin for um, 10,000. So I've Tried to make that clear for you guys, but don't forget there's like there's two, there's two of each of these slots, and there's only one ten thousand. So don't forget to multiply those by uh, by two. Uh, get a total. Your the total you get here should match the total number of ways to reach the bottom that you got when you actually analyze slot D um, using Pascal's method. In this column, you're determining the chance of reaching this slot. So you, you know the total number of ways to the bottom. You've got the total number of ways to reach each slot. You could divide those. You could find the percent chance of reaching those slot. Round to one decimal place. And as a check, your answer should total, because you've got all outcomes, it should add to 100%. What I'm having you guys do in the next one is, uh, is saying, let's say Plinko was played, or 1,000 Plinko chips were dropped on the prices, right? 
how many times in a thousand would you expect to hit $0, 100, 500? So um, you guys are very simply just taking your answer in the percentage column, um, uh, taking the decimal value of that and multiplying it by a thousand, right? And and the what you should get is those add up to a thousand. They may not might add to like 999 or 1001 due to some rounding, uh, but it should add to near a thousand. Um, and then finally, uh, you're going to determine how much money is given away or made by the contestants um, from uh, these thousand attempts. So you take the number of times hit and you'll just multiply by the dollar value. So for example, if you, you know, let's say you land in the, well, the zero slot, I don't know, this, you will get a different value, but let's say it's 222 times. Multiply that by zero, no money is given out for the zero slot. But for the hundred, let's say the hundred, you can get, I don't know, I'm just making this number up, but 301. Let's say you, you hit that 301 times. That means the producers are giving away 301. Uh, they're giving away a hundred dollars 301 times, and that would be $30,100. And you guys will do that for each dollar value and determine how much money is given away in Plinko in a thousand attempts. Um, so um, uh, that's actually just your, your answer for that, for part B. Um, finally, once you guys find the total amount of money given out in a thousand attempts, we're going to look at a single player because a single player can only have a maximum of five chips to drop. You guys found the money given out in a thousand attempts. If you divide that by 200, that would give you the money given out in five attempts. So uh, the calculation you do in part C here would be the actual expected amount a player would expect to win by dropping their Plinko chip in slot D uh, five times, um, which would be very useful to know for uh, just for the player, for the producers who need to know and plan for, well, how much should I budget overall in my season of, of prices right to give out for Planko. You want you want to make sure that you're you're not giving away too much money. Um, so uh, that's it for the Plinko analysis. Uh, if you have anything else you want clarified from the Plinko analysis, let me know. If you want to snap a picture of your uh, while you're applying Pascal's method, uh, see if I if you're if you're doing if you're doing it right, if you want me to check, I'd be more than happy to. Um, but uh, have fun with this assignment. Submit it into the appropriate Dropbox when you're done. Um, a, a PDF is very helpful. Um, if you are uh, putting it in as pictures, a JPEG or a PNG um, is, is fine. Um, but there are a lot of great free apps out there that on your phone take pictures you've taken, combine them into a PDF that you could like email to yourself or put on your Google Drive very quickly and efficiently. Um, if you want suggestions for that, you can let me know or just search for yourself on your uh, on your app store. But anyways, have a lot of fun with this and we'll see you guys online.